Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, welcome to Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge, and today, at the request of the Johnsonator, big thanks to him, he's always popping up on the comments, we're doing some more green stuff tutorials at last. I know it's been a while, we said we'd do them about two months ago, but we've been really busy building up these armies for battle reports. And we're still working on the Forge Fiend. Um, this is the neck part, and as you can see, I've took most of it out with a Dremel and a pair of clippers. Same as we did in the first video, I'm just going to glue that together before we carry on. As you can see, I've got that all together now. What we're going to do here is we're going to fill this with a um, spine. And there's the old forge fiend. We're going to fill it with a spine and doing, do some other detail work as well. And firstly, I'm going to start filling in the top the same way we did on the first video. I didn't do it as neat as I could have done, so it, before you glue these two parts together, you could probably fill it with green stuff and then put the two halves together, causing it to squash the green stuff in the middle, giving you a better bond. As you can see, it just didn't want to connect the same way it did before, and that's quite a lot of green stuff. You could always put a bit of foam core or polystyrene in there before you put in your green stuff, so you're not wasting loads of it. Now to start the spine, I used to do this a long time ago, I haven't done it in ages. Now this is a wax sculpting tool with a hard edge. Firstly we're going to start dividing these into spine sections. Now you could use the technique with the, with the comb that we were doing before, but you'd have to pull some of the teeth out of the comb and then roll it. Which might be beneficial if you plan on doing multiple versions of this. Well, once we broke those into several bits, I'm going to switch the tools and use a small rubber tool and just start blending those lines around so, they're not got, so they haven't got a sharp edge from the uh, wax tool. Be very gentle with this, don't pull on it so it distorts the shape, be just rolling down the um, center parts to break them into spine sections a bit further. Now I've let it set a little bit because I've been doing this for a while. Uh, well it has set a little bit because I've been doing this for a while. And um, that does make this a little bit easier. Now we're going to um, use the side of the rubber tool to start going back and forth or more left to right in this case as well as down the middle but we're very gently squashing those parts and that's going to make a tiny dip in the center of those spinal pieces and we're going then left to right to push those lumps that we're making ever so slightly to the side this is going to make those spines look much more three-dimensional than usual now this is going to take quite some time because you have to be really gentle otherwise you leave um, shapes in there that you don't want and other marks but of course you can always run your finger over it with some water, smooth it back out and keep going. Make sure they go all the way around but they don't want to be as deep as the first ones that you've done. As you can see, starting to get some form of spine shape to this now. Now when it comes to the spines, the vertebrae I should say, the vertebrae going down, we're starting to roll that round and make little dimples in the sides of it. This was sort of more—it was more of a test than anything else today, guys. I was um, sort of winging this one, but there's uh, some more stuff coming out for this series as well. We're going to be doing chains and some other stuff in the next one. As you can see, we're starting to get a shape now. I'm just mucking about using different tools. Uh, back to the wax sculpting tools. I don't know what any of these are individually called, so I can't really help you out on that front. But this is just a case of poking it left, right, up, down, and just keep slowly blending those parts together. Now once we've got a rough spine shape, as you can see I've left a big chunk there, and the reason for that is I'm going to squash that down into the armour, and that's going to hold it all together. So that green stuff's going to bond to the plastic and hold that in place. And with it being Nurgle, we can very easily go over that with other stuff if need be. 
The other reason I didn't fill the bottom part is there is a part of the forge fiend that goes over the top and that's going to push the green stuff down. It sticks out from the back, comes over the top, you'll see that in a minute I think. So because we want to make sure it fits before we let it set. Because if we don't, then um, we're going to have to sand it down, which could take a long time when it comes to green stuff. I also decided since we're doing a Nurgle Forge Fiend, which is unfor it's unfortunate I started this project before the Codex came out because you can't actually have a Death Guard Forge Fiend. So this is just a case of finishing the project. Now I'm going to build a brain on the underside of this and instead of just making some squiggles with the um, green stuff, I've made a very very thin piece of green stuff and I'm using the tools to make one little curve like the frontal lobe of the brain and then using two of those to get a good pinch on it and twist it back on itself. Then what we're going to do is we're going to snap that off because otherwise it's going to get it's going to keep pulling as I'm sculpting it. So I'm going to snap part of that off and make several other parts like that. Then we're just going to line them up together. And once we've lined them up together, you will have something that looks like part of a brain. And all I've done is put that on the underneath of there and then glued the head on. So we've now got something that resembles a brain and something that resembles a spine. I could also add some more flesh to this, which is probably what I'm going to do. I didn't do the flesh for the brain yet. So same way we did the flesh in the first one, but I'm going to cover it again just in case you guys haven't seen the first one. Is I'm going to make a very, very thin piece of green stuff. And this is on a plastic sheet with Vaseline on it so it doesn't stick. And all I'm going to do is use my sculpting tool to take out little tears in the what's going to be the flesh. And before we apply that to the back of the neck where the sp spine and vertebrae are, we're going to coat that with a Vaseline and an old brush from like a pound shop. Because we don't want it to stick too suddenly and not be able to distort it where we want to. And as you can see that peels off nice and easy. I'm going to use the flat side that was on the plastic for the skin. And as you can see, if that didn't have Vaseline on it, that would have all stuck almost immediately to the rest of the green stuff and wouldn't have worked. But because there's Vaseline on it, I can manipulate this and stretch and pull it around and open up those wounds even further. Now I'm going to start finding places on the model where I can use my rubber tool to push the flesh into gaps so it will start to bond. Because we're going to have to cut off all this excess and we obviously don't want to tear the work we've already started with. It's best to have a bit too much green stuff than not enough. And obviously all these videos are sped up because um, it takes a long time. Now I'm just going to pull most of that off. Further away than you want to make the cut guys because it can stretch. I mean this is a brand new X-Acto knife and it's still sticking. It's not cutting exactly how I want. So. Leave yourself a bit of wiggle room and start cutting away further than you want to rather than trying to cut exactly where you need to. Now once we've got rid of all of that, we're going back to the other tools, the rubber tool and the wax sculpting tool. We're going to start picking the flesh off of the vertebrae and bringing them up because I made it a little bit too thin. I should have made it a bit thicker like the other ones. So if you just make that first bit before you put it on a little bit thicker you won't have any issues what I'm doing is poking underneath it making a lip on the flesh so it looks fatter than it is and also looks more like it's bonded now that's the start of that I might build up the armor around uh, build the armor around the neck back up so it looks like it's popped open <laughs> Alright guys, that's all there is for this video it was a short Monday video there's uh, some more coming out over the next week uh, thanks for the Johnsonator, uh, no, to the Johnsonator for the suggestions. Um, catch you in the next one, guys.